Welcome again. Right now we're at 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 1 through 16. Christian order. Paul writes, Be imitators of me, even as I also am of Christ. Now Paul says to the believers in Corinth, Be imitators of me, even as I am of Christ. Well, how did Paul behave? What did he do? How did he live? What was his lifestyle? In the book of Philippians, he says it very clearly. He says, concerning the law, concerning obeying the mitzvot, the commandments of God, I am blameless. That means he obeys every one that applies to him. That means he does not have any sin in his life. That is how he lives his life. He says, be imitators of me as I am of Christ. And likewise, Jesus himself, he is the living word of God. The Torah is the word of God. The commandments are the word of God. Jesus is that word in human form. He is the personification of the Torah. He is also our sinless and spotless lamb. That means he obeyed all the commandments blamelessly. Just like Paul said, and by the way, just like Zechariah and Elizabeth did, John the Baptist's parents, as recorded in the book of Luke chapter 1. Obeying all of God's commandments blamelessly. That's how we're supposed to live. Now I praise you, brothers, that you remember me in all things, and hold firm the traditions even as I delivered them to you. Interesting. Paul doesn't say just the word of God here, but he delivered to them the traditions. What traditions would that be? I mean, we're talking about Paul here. He's a Jewish rabbi. He's 100% Jewish. Again, in the book of Philippians, we read that he more or less boasts of his Jewishness, okay? And so he delivered the Jewish traditions to the believers in Corinth. Very significant point here. But I would have you know that the head or origin of every man is Christ. Every man came from Christ, came from God. Man is created in the image of God. Man is created in the image of God in many ways. And the head, that is origin, of the woman is man. And the head, or again, here we got origin, of Christ is God. So let's get this picture in our mind here. We've got God and we got Christ. Under that we got man and under that we got woman. Woman came from man. Man came from Christ. Christ came from God. Paul went on to say, every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonors his head. But every woman praying or prophesying with her head uncovered dishonors her head. For it is one and the same thing as if she were shaved. Wait a second here. Paul equates covering the head with hair. Look at what the Apostle Paul is saying here, okay? We've got one of the most powerful men that ever lived in history. Of course, Jesus is at the top. We got the 12. But apart from Jesus and the 12, we've got Paul, very powerful man, very influential man. He's saying the woman dishonors God by dishonoring man, by not covering her head, which dishonors man, which in turn dishonors Christ, which in turn dishonors God. Paul goes on to say here, if a woman is not covered, let her hair also be cut off. But if it is shameful for a woman to have her hair cut off or to be shaved, let her be covered. Now, some would interpret that to mean that a woman is supposed to have just long hair. Other people interpret that to mean a woman is supposed to have like a headscarf or some other kind of covering. Verse 7, Paul says, For a man indeed ought not to have his head covered, because he is he. He is the image and glory of God. But, but the woman is the glory of the man. Don't forget here that Paul is talking about the woman coming from man. 
the man coming from Christ and Christ coming from God. For man is not from woman, but woman from man. For man wasn't created for the woman, but the woman for the man. For this cause, the woman ought to have authority over her own head because of the angels. The woman ought to have her head covered because that honors the man, which in turn honors Jesus, which in turn honors God. That's how the woman honors God. And in so doing, the angels that are watching, don't forget, the scriptures teach us that we are always in the eyes, in the sight of the great cloud of witnesses, as it talks about in Hebrews chapter 12. The witnesses, the watchers, the angels. Now, as the woman covers her head, she honors man. And as she honors man, that in turn, as like dominoes, honors Jesus, which honors God in the sight of all the angels. Nevertheless, neither is the woman independent of the man nor the man independent of the woman in the Lord. For as woman came from man, so a man also comes through a woman. But all things are from God. More or less he's saying, don't get me wrong, one cannot exist without the other. Verse 13, Paul says, judge for yourselves. Is it appropriate that a woman pray to God unveiled? Now obviously here, Paul is speaking from nearly 2,000 years ago in a very, very different culture. I mean, back in those days, every woman had their heads covered when they were praying especially or prophesying. So Paul is using that culture as an example for leverage for his message. Verse 14, doesn't even nature itself teach you that if a man has long hair, it is a dishonor to him? I know a lot of you would say right here, wait a second, didn't Jesus have long hair? Well, yes, he did. You see, we have in our hands today a few ancient manuscripts from the time of the Bible that was written about the physical appearance of Jesus. And by and large, the consensus is that Jesus had long hair. Why would he have long hair? Well, you see, there is an exemption to this rule that Paul is presenting to us right here, that man is to have short hair. It's shameful for him to have long hair. In Numbers chapter 6, it talks about the vow of the Nazarite, okay? We'll get to that. You know, Lord willing, we'll get to that. But just in a nutshell, when you obey Torah, we were talking earlier about Paul obeying Torah like thoroughly, completely, blamelessly. So it's one thing to really obey Torah. I mean, obey the commands to be holy, separate from this world system, separate from the sinners. Don't forget, God says, come out from among them, says the Lord, and be separate. Then I will be a father to you and you will be my sons and daughters. So there is a level of holiness that Paul attained to, as he said in Philippians, that he was blameless concerning the law of God. He obeyed all the commands, just as Zechariah and Elizabeth did in Luke chapter 1. But there is yet another level. There's like a supercharged level. There's like a nitro level, a level of holiness for those who are willing to take the vow the vow of the Nazarite. The vow of the Nazarite is the highest, most holy place, so to speak, in your walk with God. It's like this, okay? We got the tabernacle. For those of you who are familiar with the tabernacle, we've got the outer court, you know, where sinners can come into. But then we got the inner court. We got the holy place where it's very restricted. Not a lot of people has access to the holy place. But then there is the holy of holies. Likewise, we have believers who are sinners but yet they have to get to that place of holiness. They have to come and they have to sacrifice. Then we got those who are holy. They live a lifestyle of holiness. They're in the holy place. But then if you want to, if you want to attain the highest level of holiness, you have to take the Nazarite vow. It is considered to be the strictest level of obedience in God's law the Nazarite vow. It is the holiest place that you can be in. It is a challenge of ultimate obedience. 
why wouldn't Jesus do that? Why wouldn't Jesus take the Nazarite vow? We've got Samson that explicitly says in the scriptures, took the Nazarite vow. We've got John the Baptist that said he was under the Nazarite vow. Why not Jesus? I know it doesn't explicitly say he did, but we have some clues that he did. The report of him having long hair is one such clue. So yes, Paul's right here. It's shameful for a man to have long hair, except if you are under the Nazarite vow. That is a very honorable, very respectful place for you to be. And as a man, you are supposed to grow your hair while you're under that vow. Verse 15, but if a woman has long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given to her for a covering. So here we go. Paul makes it very clear here. What he's talking about is hair, okay? When he's talking about a woman covering her head, he is talking about hair. But if any man seems to be contentious, we have no such custom, neither do God's assemblies. In other words, he says, if any of you want to argue about this stuff that I'm talking about, listen, we don't do anything other than this. This is the way the church operates. This is the way it's always operated. And boy, do we need to have the Christian order in our society today. Be a contributor. Be an example. Seek God with all your heart. And if you do, you will find him. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.